Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We're here today on our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday. Today's topic is going to be about how to best integrate some small cheats or some small treats throughout the week how they may affect your overall hormones, blood sugar, inflammation, or weight gain, and if it's right for you. So basically, there was a great debate that I heard. Should you have small, little, moderate cheats every day, meaning like a couple cookies, um, some chocolate, like whatever your favorite treats are, maybe it's some chips, uh, or should you just once a week have one big cheat meal, that might equate to all the smaller cheats maybe throughout the week. So just a couple examples would be this. You know, should you just allow yourself maybe some, a uh, bre- little bit of bread on a daily basis, right? Um, some gluten, some wheat, some things that could be inflammatory. Or like I said, uh, would it be okay to have some chips after dinner or with lunch? Uh, to have a couple cookies, you know, each night after dinner or mid-afternoon? What might be a- another one that, that people like? Or some different crackers, like their favorite crackers that are more processed Based foods. So, I mean, I'm not talking about candy. I'm not, I mean, we can talk about candy if you want. So, like, let's add cake to the list. You know, should you have a little sliver of cake on a daily basis uh, or just a larger amount of like a cheat meal, which we'll talk about, and, um, you know, some uh, dessert uh, once a week? Another one could be, you know, what if you only had like, you ate well all day, but you know, for lunch, lunch was your your moderation, and you just had like you know your favorite, just like one slice of pizza, right? Two slices of pizza, maybe. And and so it's a good debate. It really is. I'm gonna try to make it a little bit easier, and I'm just gonna keep it in most people's wheelhouse where we're we're, we're gonna be eating well. Let's say uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So breakfast uh, again, choose your favorite breakfast. I'm just gonna say it's a smoothie. And then at lunch, I'm just gonna say you're having a salad with some. Uh, chickpeas on top, cut up vegetables, olive oil, maybe your favorite fig glazed balsamic, whatever it is. And if you need a little starch, you get some diced Japanese yams or sweet potatoes, like whatever it might be, right? And then for dinner, you're having this uh, extravagant wild salmon with, uh, let's say, asparagus. It's special little sauce that's healthy that it's cooked in. And, uh, you know, maybe there's some uh, broccoli on the side as well. And if... um, Again, you, you need a little bit more starch. Uh, you're having some wild rice. Okay, so like you've got this nice day of, of meals prepared for yourself. Again, to integrate whatever your diet is. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you on this specific show what you should be eating for your uh, two meals a day, one meal a day, three meals a day, your snacks, whatever it might be. We're just saying that you're, you're eating overall nutritious food. Okay, plant-based, paleo, uh, however you want to eat it. Okay, so now... Um, that's, that's say, your typical diet. Now we're just going to say, is it better, though, that each afternoon when you get a little bit of those uh, hangries that you have um, two of your favorite small little cookies? I call them paleo, call them whatever you want. But, you know, there's, there's, um, there's regular sugar in it, cane sugar. There's uh, honey. There's maple syrup. But we're just going to say there's some sugar in there, right? And then there's going to be some processed flour. It's processed almond flour or it's processed regular flour or it's processed gluten-free flour. It's just, it's processed food. That's what I'm getting at, right? So we're basically eating some processed carbohydrates, right, with some sugar and some fat. Okay, so the fat is going to be your chocolate chips, your nuts, your whatever, or it's just going to be some uh, grass-fed butter, again, whatever it might be. And you can call it a cheat or not call it a cheat. That's fine. Again, or insert your favorite store-bought cookies, like your favorite, uh, what are those things called? Um, not vanilla wafers, but it's like, you know, those old-school uh, cookies. They're from like, I don't even know what they're called, like Nantucket or something like that. Anyway, you insert your favorite little treat, but you're only having a couple. Okay, so that's what I'm getting at. Or do, and the reason I'm using cookies is like, it's one of my favorite things ever. Really, I mean, get like, 
I, I could justify eating cookies like the next person, so that's why I'm doing this show as well. Like, is it better just to have a couple every day? Okay, we'll talk about that in a moment. And then the big cheat, though, would be, okay, you're going out uh, on a Friday night, Saturday night, and you're going to have pasta, you're going to have bread, uh, and then for dessert, you're going to have your favorite, like, molten lava cake with a side of gelato, coffee gelato, uh, and it's going to be absolutely delicious. Okay, so that's it. So we've got a Friday night, Big cheat meal, epic cheat meal, that's, you know, some of your favorite foods and you're not holding back. Or every single day, you're eating those cookies or whatever it might be. And again, insert your favorite thing every afternoon or, or after dinner. Okay, so let's look at that. Again, like, and let's try to uh, figure out uh, which one is best. I'm going to give you both sides. We can have a debate here. I would love to hear in the comments. Better to have it daily or once a week. And I'll give you my vote at the end for myself as well. And this debate actually came up because I was listening to an interview with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Nothing to do with food, right? It was about, um, I don't even know, like how healthcare is handled, et cetera, et cetera. And he says, I don't believe in debates because like in... <laughs> I, it's, you know, he only believes that there's one way of looking at things. And I think that that's totally fine. Like that is, again, an opinion. Like it's, it's one thing. I actually like to debate and I like to debate in a healthy way where both people are entitled to their opinion. And I also don't think that most science is rock solid. Like there is a reason why you, there are different opinions on conventional medicine or natural health or like whatever it might be. And I think that there's oftentimes truth in both, and I think that it's situational, and that's why what we do is bioindividuality. You're like, is it right for you at this right time, right, this moment in time? And that's, that's how you figure it out. But I don't think that debate should ever be squashed, and that is because we need dissenting points of view if only to further strengthen our own argument, to make us really research, think, and work harder in order to solidify all the different points of view. But anyway, I digress. But that's this, this topic of debate. I really like that. It's like the topic of debate. Like, should it be this or this? Because you can make an argument both ways. I'm going to make the argument right now. So smaller cheats every single day. Well, there's this part to it. If you're having a little something every day, not a lot of something, but a little something, well, then you're telling yourself that I'm not deprived. Sure, I need to drink my smoothie in the morning, uh, plant-based lunch, and then my you know wild fish at dinner, whatever it might be, my Mediterranean dinner. You might say, but this is not all the foods that I want to be eating. So on Monday, you might have your uh, favorite chocolate chip cookies. And on Tuesday, it might be a little bag of uh, chips in the afternoon. On Wednesday, it could be uh, a small bowl of your favorite I don't know, ice cream, plant-based ice cream, but it's just like, it's a little bit every day, right? It's just this little bit every day. Okay, so it doesn't even matter, a couple hundred calories, whatever it might be, but like, it's still a non-healthy food. It's really difficult to convince me that eating, you know, chips or a lot of these processed foods are healthy when they're typically fried in oil uh, and, or they're going to cause some type of larger glucose spike from an unhealthy food and there's uh, high levels maybe of arachidonic acid or high levels of, um, you know, again, or inflammatory processed grains is really what we're talking about, right? Okay, so there's that fact. But every single day, though, there's no deprivation. Like, you get to have a little something. And so you're like, all right, well, I will eat these foods and I'll do my healthy plan as long as I get a little something every day. And that can satisfy a lot of people. That can keep them adhering to a plan if they know that they get a handful of whatever it is their, their favorite thing is every single day. So they can have a little popcorn, they can have a little bit of ice cream, a little bit of cookies, some chips, uh, they can have a, a, their favorite chocolate, even though I don't think chocolate's the worst thing in the world but by any means. I think that there's potentially a lot of antioxidants and health-based benefits, but it can certainly be overdone. And of course, we're talking about like good quality dark chocolate. I'm not talking about like milk chocolate with um, chocolate liqueur in it and all sorts of different uh, sugars, et cetera, added to it. But you know what I'm saying. And so there is something to not being deprived and to maybe being able to stick with the plan longer if you're able to have a little something every day. And so that's one side of the argument is like, listen, I'm not gonna diet, I'm not gonna eat healthy, because I don't. I wouldn't call it a diet, I would call it like eating healthy, a healthy diet, right? But I'm not gonna do this if I don't get a little something every day because I feel too deprived. Okay, you know, fair enough, that's one argument. Now, the, what, the issue is though, I just wanna explain this, the issue is, is that every time you eat those, especially store-bought cookies or ice cream or whatever it might be, you're getting couple issues with that. One, you're going to get a spike 
and it's probably going to be a larger spike in glucose. Now, maybe you don't feel that's as big a deal and you're not worried about, you know, weight loss or losing body fat or whatever it is. Okay, you know, fair enough. But you're still going to get the infl inflammation from it. And the inflammation is going to last anywhere from 12 to 31 hours. That's been fairly well proven now based on the food and based on the health of the individual, et cetera. Uh, and you're also going to be potentially feeding the gut microbiome foods that it doesn't necessarily want. And so that's more on a daily basis. So although it's a small assault, it's a daily small assault. So it's kind of like, you know, water dripping on something every single day, those little drops, right? Eventually what happens? Well, the water erodes even the strongest rock. So it's, it's, I think that's worth noting, okay? So every single day, uh, you get maybe the hormonal uh, issues, the uh, maybe elevated levels of estrogen, you get the uh, potentially the inflammation load from it, uh, inflammatory prostaglandins from the specific types of processed, let's just say grain or foods uh, or the dairy. And, um, and then you get potentially the, the glucose dysregulation. Okay, so we've got that. And again, it's gonna take maybe um, 12 to 31 hours for that to rebound. So it's like every day, you're being a little bit inflamed. It's one way to look at it. Okay, now the one large cheat a week would be, let's go back to, uh, again, like every once in a while, I shouldn't say every once in a while, because every week I do a cheat meal. And um, sometimes I do enjoy that to be pasta, because I very much enjoy pasta, um, and bread. But I've been doing less bread as of late, just because I know that it doesn't make me feel all that phenomenal. So here's the thing. Bread, pasta, and you have your dessert afterwards. Pick your favorite dessert. Uh, it could be more cookies, right? <laughs> so that'd be totally fine if that's what you're into. Ice cream, cake, you name it, right? Okay, so that's once a week. And it's happening, let's just say Friday, and you're going out to dinner at whatever time, and uh, that is going to be, it's gonna last you know, your, your meal, let's say an hour and a half, two hours. Okay, so from like six to eight, eight to 10, whatever time your meal is on, on Friday night. Back in the day, mine was much later, and now with two kids, it's much earlier. But having said all that, it's once a week cheat. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, everything's stable, everything's pretty good, glucose, inflammation, gut microbiome, then Friday night comes, cheat meal, you might even have alcohol at the cheat meal, right? Your moderation during the week might even be, oh, the only thing I'm gonna eat well, but I'm gonna have one small glass of red wine. Okay, again, that's a dysregulation every single day. But on your cheat meal, once a week on Friday, you've got your bread and pasta, you've got a glass of wine, and you have your dessert. Okay, so you're getting this big spike, probably not gonna be your best night's sleep Friday night, that's for sure, right? And, and you're gonna to have to then digest that and process that through the liver, uh, and then you're gonna recover, let's say again, in like you know, 24, 31 hours after that meal in terms of inflammation. Uh, blood sugar, of course, should be back to normal fairly quickly if your body's balanced, but it's important to note that. So those are the differences, but I will say this as well, and I think that this is important and worth noting, that uh, for a lot of people, and I would say I fall into that camp, if I have something that I very much enjoy out of the ordinary of going out to dinner, let's say it's mid-afternoon and there's um, chips in the house or we keep ice cream in the house. If I have it once and it's outside of a restaurant, whereas where I like to do a cheat meal because then it's kind of situational as well for my, my psyche, is that uh, you're more like a lot of people, not everybody, I will want that next thing the next day. So if I get used to having, let's say, chips at lunch, even if they're the healthiest chips in the whole world, they're fried in oil, okay, so I'll want those the next day if they're there. If I had ice cream after dinner one night because it was there, and I don't care if it's a plant-based ice cream, whatever it is, then if there's still some left, I, my brain's always like, well, you had ice cream last night. It was really good. Don't you want it again tonight? So what I find is that for me at least, not for everybody, uh, it's more challenging if I were to have a little bit just even a little bit, which I'm not good with a little bit either. Like if you gave me one scoop of ice cream, I'm like, oh, that was nice, but not as nice as a bowl of ice cream, right? And if you give me a half a cookie, that was nice, but I'd rather have two or three. And so, so for some people, you kind of have to know who you are, is you might be better. And we tell people, again, for the first 21 days on our like fat lossity plan or a CBO protocol or a detox, there's no cheats. And that's because we just need to restabilize those blood sugar levels, the endorphins, the casinomorphins, the dopaminergic based response, like all of those things. We're trying to stabilize it because I'm someone that absolutely produces a lot of dopamine. And if like, if I had that nice little sweet treat, I'm like, oh, let's get more dopamine. And it's like, I don't need any more dopamine. Like, we'll, we'll, we're good on that, right? So from, I have this two perspectives. One, 
is I'm not into spiking my glucose levels with unhealthy food um, or promoting higher levels of prostaglandins and inflammation or any type of like poor sleep with doing a little cheat every day. That's not something that I want. I want to try to get like really base level strong for as many days and hours as I can. And then once a week, I will blow it out and have whatever it is that I want. Some weeks, I uh, don't really feel like that much. And some weeks, yeah, I'll have whatever I want. And that one time, yeah, I know that it's not gonna be the best night's sleep, it's not gonna be whatever, and that's a trade-off, right? So you don't even have to do it if you don't want, but I'm sharing with people different perspectives. And then for me also, I wake up the next day, it's not my house, and yeah, it's back to being able to uh, be level stable. And on tomorrow's show, I'll talk about my one day uh, reset diet that I do on Mondays as well to make sure that everything is absolutely back to normal and recover really, really quick. So ultimately, we'll put it this way. The choice is yours. One, you need to know what type of individual you are. And two, um, do you want little bouts of inflammation and glucose and hormone dysregulation on a daily basis? Or would you rather it once a week where you get to have everything you want versus in one meal, not the whole day, one meal, so it's not 24 hours of dysregulation or 16 hours, whatever you're up for, um, instead of every day. Now, again, if you are someone that can't have it without wanting it the next day, so you're, you're careful, you're having it outside of your house, kind of like what I do. Uh, but if you're someone that can't follow a diet, like really doesn't want to follow healthy eating, if they can't have a little something every day because they feel too deprived, well then for you, it really may be best to have that little moderate uh, cheat, we'll call it, or healthy treat, whatever you want to refer to it as, on a daily basis. So again, the debate is up. It's up for debate, right? Leave in the comments below whether you are the small daily treat type of person or the once a week, maybe even twice, a uh, big epic cheat meal more like I may be. All right, take care, everybody. Uh, fun show, really be, enjoy being able to bring these topics to you. I appreciate your time. As always, if this show is helpful, do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.